Hello everyone, this is Dr. Esperanza at welcome sa aking YouTube channel. At for today, we're going to be working on one of the many applications of the derivative which is the first derivative test na kung saan mag analyze tayo ng function f of x gamit ang derivative function. So do stick around at tuturan ko kayo kung paano gamitin ang mga derivative rules sa pag-analyze ng mga function. Ituturuan ko kayo kung paano gamitin yung mga derivative rules nyo. So, natutunan na natin kung paano gamitin yung derivative sa pagkuha ng tangent line ng isang function. Ngayon naman ay gagamitin natin ang derivative sa pag-analyze ng f of x or graph ng f of x gamit lamang ang derivative. So, since gumagamit tayo ng graph ngayon, kailangan nyo malaman yung mga basic definitions ng ating graph ng isang function tulad nito. So, itong f of x na nakikita nyo ay uh, in graph form at sa algebra lesson ang inyong pwedeng gamitin or description sa ibang mga parts nitong ating f of x na napakadaling tingnan would be your vertex so meron tayong vertex dyan meron din tayong vertex dito at kung meron tayong interval dito sa linya na to or boundaries meron tayong tinatawag na mga endpoints na nandito sa point na ito, point ng intersection ng iyong f of x doon sa iyong boundary at let's say x equal to negative 2.5 at ito rin yung isa pang end point ng ating f of x. Pero sa calculus, meron tayong mga special names sa mga points na yan at yan yung ating pag-aaralan today. So meron tayong tinatawag na Absolute maximum, absolute minimum, relative maximum, or local maximum. At meron din tayong relative or local minimum. So ano ba dito yung absolute at ano ba dito yung relative extrema na tinatawag sa ating function? So unahin natin yung relative maximum. So ang relative maximum natin dito sa function na ito, between x equal to negative 2.5 at x equal to 2 sa boundary na yan, meron tayong maximum points at x equal to negative 1 at x equal to 2. So, ang ating absolute maximum, pwede tayong magkaroon ng 2 or more absolute maximum depende sa itsura ng ating functions at depende kung nasaan yung ating mga boundaries. So, yung ating absolute max ngayon ay x equal to negative 1 at x equal to 2. At sa pag-analyze ng function, lagi natin ginagamit yung values ng x at hindi yung height ng ating function. So, yung ating function o yung y value, yun lang yung magpapakita sa atin ng visual representation ng ating mga points. Now, absolute minimum naman. So, ang absolute minimum between negative 2.5 and 2, including yung endpoints at saka yung ating mga bends or yung mga vertices na tinatawag, ang ating absolute minimum dito ngayon, so meron tayong point dito, meron tayong vertex dito, meron tayong vertex dito, at meron tayong point dito. So kung kukunin natin yung pinakamababang height ng ating function between negative 2.5 and 2, it would be at this value of x, which is at negative 2.5. So, ang absolute minimum natin ay isa lang, at yun yung ating endpoint ng ating function, which is at x equal to negative 2.5. So, yan yung ating absolute minimum. At ngayon naman, kunin natin yung relative max at relative minimum. So, meron na tayong point dito, which is our absolute minimum at dalawang ating absolute maximum na isa sa endpoint at isa sa vertex ng ating function. Ano naman yung relative max? Ang relative max naman natin, by definition, it will only occur doon sa ating functions na hindi kasama yung ating mga endpoints. So in this case, ang ating relative max would just be this point right here at hindi siya pwedeng maging endpoint kasi by definition, ang relative or local max ay it would happen sa critical value or sa vertex inside our boundary ng ating f of x. So ang ating relative max would be x equal to negative 1. At ating relative minimum, parehas rin lang siya ng definition, it would only happen in your bend. So, ang ating relative minimum would be at x equal to positive 
one. So yan yung apat na items na kailangan natin malaman para pag-analyze ng isang function. So let's say, given itong function na ito, parehas pa rin ng f of x, pero ibahin natin yung boundary. Yung boundary natin ay nag-move at x equal to negative 1 at x equal to 2. At hahanapin natin yung absolute max, absolute min, relative max, and relative min. And in this case, absolute max natin, yung pinakamataas, would be at those two points, isa sa endpoint at isa sa pangalawang endpoint. So, ang ating absolute max would be at x equal to negative 1 at x equal to 2. Or positive 2. Now, ang ating namang absolute minimum, dito sa function na ito, it happened dito sa ating vertex, which is at x equal to positive 1. Now, kung titignan naman, nat naman natin yung ating relative max and relative min, that means, hindi na natin titignan yung ating mga endpoints at magpo-focus lang tayo doon sa ating vertex. At dito, iisa lang yung vertex natin, which is this value at x equal to 1. So, in this case, hindi siya relative max or wala tayong relative maximum at the boundaries of negative 1 and 2 dahil hindi lahat ng function merong relative max or relative min tulad ng example na ito. So, dito ang relative max natin would be none. However, ang relative minimum natin nag -e exist at yun yung ating x equal to 1. So, yan yung pag-identify ng ating absolute maximum, absolute minimum, relative max, and relative minimum. At kailangan yung malaman yung difference nung dalawa. At yung major differences nila is that yung absolute extrema, pwede siyang mangyari sa endpoints at pwede rin siyang mangyari doon sa critical number or sa vertices. At pagdating naman sa local or relative extrema, mga, mangyayari lang siya sa vertex nyo or vertices nyo given ng isang function. So, now, ang challenge natin today is paano naman natin makukuha yung mga ating relative maximum, relative minimum, or yung relative extrema or absolute extrema na tinatawag kung bibigyan tayo ng function tulad nito. So paano na natin titingnan kung ang ating f of x ay merong absolute extrema kung hindi natin nakikita yung kanyang graph. Ang given lang sa atin ay yung ating function na f of x at yung ating interval na negative 1, 4. So, hindi tayo mag-graph, hindi rin tayo gagamit ng calculator, hindi rin tayo gagamit ng mga app para may graph yung ating cubic function. Gagawin natin is gamitin yung derivative function. At ito yung isa sa mga powers or isa sa mga beauties ng uh, calculus. Kasi dito, pwede natin makuha yung ating absolute extrema, which is absolute max and absolute minimum, kung kukunin lang natin yung kanyang derivative. So, step number one, pagkuha ng mga critical numbers. At sa pagkuha ng mga critical numbers, ang um, critical numbers na tinatawag ay ito isang technical term na ginagamit natin para sa vertices ng ating functions or yung mga bends na tinatawag ng ating f of x. So, sa pagkuha ng critical number, ang formula niya would be to find, to find f prime of x equal to 0 or yung solutions ng ating derivative function. So, meron tayo nga yung f of x which is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2 at kukunin natin yung derivative niya so, ngayon, i-apply na natin yung derivative rule dito sa pag-analyze ng ating function, which gives us 3x squared minus 2 times 6, which is 12x plus 9. So, ito yung ating derivative function na makakatulong sa atin sa pagkuha ng critical number by setting our f prime of x equal to 0. So, pag-set natin ng f prime of x equal to 0, Tulad ng sinabi ko, yung calculus or ang mathematics is like a foreign language that we need to be able to understand. So, dapat yung symbol na to is alam ninyo at ang ibig sabihin ng symbol na to ay ang pagkuha ng critical number. So, isa-set natin si 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equal to 0. And what we're going to do now is solve yung quadratic equation 
by factoring, quadratic formula, or completing the square. And in this particular case, pwede natin siyang mag-solve using factoring. So by GCF, take out ko si 3, matitira ko is x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And now, meron tayong quadratic function na factorable ulit kasi yung ating factors na 3, that would give us negative 4 as the sum would be x minus 3 and x minus 1. Kasi negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So ang ating solutions would be x equal to 3 and x equal to 1. So ano yung importance ng ating solutions ng ating f prime of x? Ito ngayon yung critical number na tinatawag at kung i-visualize nyo yung inyong graph kahit hindi nyo siya nakikita, ito yung mga bends or vertices ng ating function. Now, ang kailangan na lang nating makuha would be kung siya relative max or absolute max ng isang function. So, ang gagawin naman natin ngayon is to work on step number 2 which is to compare yung ating values ng ating function or yung height ng ating function from the endpoints at sa critical numbers. Ang gagawin natin is compare heights. And to be able to compare yung heights ng ating function, kukunin natin yung value ng y at x equal to negative 1, x equal to 4, x equal to 3, and x equal to 1. So, f of negative 1, f of 4, f of 3, and f of 1. So, kukunin natin yung ating height ng f of x given the values of these x's dahil yan yung tinatawag natin candidates for our, for our absolute extrema or absolute maximum or absolute minimum. Nakuha ko na po yung aking mga values para to cut times. Ang ating f of negative 1 is going to be negative 14. Ang ating f of 4 is equal to 6. Ang ating f of 3 is equal to 2. At ang ating f of 1 is equal to 6. So in this case, hahanapin lang natin yung pinakamababa at pinakamataas na value at yun yung tinatawag nating absolute extrema ng ating f of x. And in this case, ang ating pinakamababa is f of negative 1 at ang ating pinakamataas, meron tayong dalawang pinakamataas which is f of 4 and f of 1. So, to analyze the function, ang ating absolute maximum would be at x equal to 4 at x equal to 1. At ang atin namang absolute minimum, it would be x equal to negative 1. So yan yung ating analysis ng ating f of x na kahit hindi natin nakikita yung ating f of x o yung graph ng ating function, makukuha pa rin natin yung ating absolute extrema na tinatawag by just finding the critical number and comparing their heights dun sa ating given boundaries at ating critical number. So, to do a recap of what we just did, unang-una natin gagawin kapag ka meron tayong function na hindi natin nakikita yung graph, is to find the critical number dahil ang critical number, yan yung ating bends. So again, kung meron tayong function, let's say ito yung ating f of x, ang ating critical number na tinatawag would happen here. Ito yung ating x value ng ating critical number. Meron din tayo dito. At meron din tayo somewhere here. So tatlo yung critical numbers natin dito. So yun yung visualize or visualization nyo ng critical number na tinatawag natin sa calculus. At since hindi natin nakikita yung graph, kukunin natin yung derivative ng function para makuha natin yung ating critical number na hindi natin nakikita. So ito yung ating quadratic function na pwede natin isolve using factoring technique at by factoring x squared minus 4x plus 3, meron tayong solutions ng ating function at x equal to 3 at x equal to 1. At kapag nakuha na natin yung ating mga critical numbers or vertices or 
bands na tinatawag, kukunin na natin yung endpoints at i-compare natin kung aling dun sa apat na values ng x na yan ang may pinakamataas at ang pinakamababa na value ng y dun sa original function. And sa f of x na yan, paplugin lang natin si negative 1, meron tayong negative 14, yun yung ating isa sa mga endpoints, at yung isang endpoint at f of 4, ang value ng ating height ng function is at y equal to 6. At kung titing naman, naman natin yung ating mga critical numbers, i-compare natin siya sa ating mga endpoints, yung ating f of 3, which is yung ating isa sa mga vertices, is at equal to 2 yung y value, at yung ating f of 1 is equal to 6, so... By looking at your values of y at the given values of x, makikita natin na meron tayong minimum at x equal to negative 1 at dalawang maximum at 6 at 1 at x equal to 1 and x equal to 4. So, yan yung pagkuha ng absolute extrema ng isang function given its endpoints or boundary. Now, meron tayong tinatawag sa f of x na kung saan hahanapin natin kung kailan yung ating f of x ay nag-increase, nag-decrease yung relative maximum and relative minimum. Now, dito sa function natin, natutunan natin sa algebra na ang ating function ay nag-increase kapag ka positive yung slope ng ating function. So, up, 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 up. nag increase yung function natin na yan. At ito din, from here, nag increase yung ating function ng ating f of x. At dito, makikita natin na yung f of x ay nagbago from increasing, naging decreasing dito sa ating critical number or sa ating vertex. So, yung critical number, isa pa rin sa importance ng critical number, ito yung nag sabi sa atin na yung ating f of x ay nag-change ng kanyang direction from positive or increasing to decreasing behavior. So, ito ngayon yung ating decreasing behavior ng ating f of x. At yung critical number na meron tayo would be yung ating bend or vertex at meron tayong dalawang vertices dito sa ating function at ito yung ating x equal to negative 1 at x equal to 1. And all we need to do, since alam na natin yung behavior ng ating function at yung ating mga vertices na tinatawag, pwede na natin ma-identify kung saan yung function ay nag increase saan yung function ay nag decrease relative max and relative min. So, ang function natin ay nag increase from negative infinity dahil with respect to x pa rin yung ating ginagamit. So, mula sa positive or negative values ng x, nag increase siya hanggang sa x equal to negative 1. So, ang boundary natin would be negative infinity at negative 1. Now, dalawa yung ating intervals na kung saan yung ating f of x ay nag increase at iyon ay from positive 1 all the way to the positive infinity. So, yung union set natin would be our union set na kung saan nag increase yung ating f of x. At nag decrease naman siya dito sa interval na to, which is from negative 1 up until positive 1. At yun yung behavior ng ating f of x na kung saan siya ay nag increase at nag decrease At yung ating namang susunod na hahanapin mula sa ating f of x ay kung nasaan yung relative max and relative min. At ang relative max natin ay relative min ay nag nangyayari dun sa ating vertices. So alam natin yung max ay mas mataas at yung minimum ay yung mas mababa. So yung ating relative max, it happens right here at x equal to negative 1. At ang ating relative minimum, which happened right here sa vertex na ito, ang x value niya ay x equal to 1. Now, dalawang um, notations ang pwede niyong gamitin sa pag-identify ng relative max or relative min. At since yan ay isang point, pwede niyong gamitin yung x value niya or pwede niyo rin gamitin yung negative 1 and 0 
and 1 and 0 or yung tinatawag nating ordered pairs ng ating mga points. I'm sorry, hindi siya 0. Ang height niya is at negative 1 at yung height niya ay nandito. So let's say about 2 point something, 2 point, sabihin na natin 0 to 5, um, 4. And dito naman ay at 0. 1 and 0. So, since point ang ating mga relative max and relative min, pwede nyo siyang gamitin with respect to x or yung ating ordered pairs. So, yan yung pag-analyze natin ng f of x kung saan pwede natin malaman kung saan siya, siya nag-increase, nag-decrease at yung ating tinatawag na local or relative extrema. Now, just like what we did a while ago, Kung meron tayong ganitong function at hahanapan natin kung saan siya nag-i-increase or nag-decrease. So, in this example, decreasing tayo dito, decreasing tayo dito. At nag-i-increase naman siya dito, at nag-i-increase siya dito. At yung ating mga vertices, it's happening right here. Sa ating, let's say, at x equal to negative 2, right here, at right here. So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, relative or local extrema. Now, kailangan na lang natin isulat yung ating mga notations at bibigyan ko kayo ng pangalawang way kung paano isulat yung ating interval using inequality notation. So, increasing siya dito at dito, dito at dito. So, between negative 2 and positive 2. So, pwede kong gamitin in between negative 2 and positive 2. At increasing din siya from positive 4 all the way to the positive infinity. So, pwede kong gamitin na x greater than Four. So, yan yung other notation na pwede nyo gamitin sa pagsulat ng ating set notation. At yung ating pangalawang analysis, decreasing, it's decreasing dito sa function na to, which is anything that is to the left of the curve at x equal to negative 2. So, pwede kong isulat na x less than negative 2. And it's also decreasing dito sa point na to, which is at 2 and 4. So, pwede kong gamitin yung x in between 2 and 4. At yung ating relative maximum, yung pinakamataas natin, dito nangyayari yan sa bend na yan. So, ang ating relative max is at x equal to 2. At ang ating relative minimum, meron tayong dalawa, 1 and 2, but we're looking at the lowest value of our vertex at yun ay nangyayari sa x equal to negative 2. So, yan yung ating analysis kapag binigyan tayo ng function in graph form. Basta alam nyo kung ano yung mga definitions nyo at anong itsura ng mga relative extrema na hinahanap natin, you can easily analyze your f of x. Now, the challenge is, hindi natin nakikita yung graph. At yun yung, again, one of the many applications ng calculus. At yun yung gagawin natin para sa example na to. Paano natin makukuha kung kailan nag increase nag decrease relative max and relative min, ang ating function kung hindi natin nakikita yung graph. So, gagamitan natin siya ng derivative dahil, again, ang critical number or yung vertex ng ating mga function ay nangyayari sa solutions ng ating f prime of x. And again, this is Dr. Esperanza and thank you for watching my YouTube video. At kung nagustuhan mo yung lesson na tinuro ko sa inyo, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. At kung nahihiraman ka sa mga calculus, algebra, trigonometry, at iba pa mga math lessons nyo, Nod lang kayo na aking YouTube channel para matulungan ko kayo sa aking mga math videos.